The last few years, I've gone from spending over four hours editing a single Milky Way image to now spending less than 30 minutes, oftentimes even less than 15. I've been working really hard to simplify my workflow and make a less adjustments do more. Now with that, I found that there is two particular adjustments that I personally think can elevate your Milky Way photography instantly, which I'm going to be sharing with you today. I'm Austin James Jackson, professional landscape photographer from Utah, and I am so excited that you're here. In this video, we're going to be diving into just two adjustments that can get your Milky Way photos 90% of the way there in your edits. After these two adjustments, all you'll have to do is basic corrections and you'll be set in my opinion. Now these two adjustments do take place in Photoshop, but if you don't use Photoshop normally, fear not. I'm gonna break it down for you guys in a way that'll make sense for even the most novice of photo editors, but be useful for even the most advanced photo editors. I tend to go pretty fast, but pause and play the video alongside an edit of your own to see how the effects work in on your own image. Let's go ahead and jump right into Photoshop. Now, right now, what you're looking at is our base image here without any adjustments applied. I went ahead and applied a few adjustments using a camera raw filter just to get us off into a better place to start. So what I'd recommend is taking it in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw if you haven't used Camera Raw before. You can go to filter and down to camera raw filter. Essentially what that's gonna do is open up all the same sliders that you would get in Lightroom or most other photo editors. You can see all that I've done to this is made a slight exposure adjustment. I brought the highlights up, the shadows down, um, and the whites and the blacks up. Basically, I, I've just kind of brightened it. I'm just trying to get my image to a more workable spot so that these next two effects that we apply, these big ones that I'm gonna show you here are going to give me more bang for my buck. So just get yourself into a workable spot. Something like this is fine. Totally fine to be desaturated, um, but we do want it to be relatively bright enough to work with. So I'm pretty happy with this. You can hit okay once you're done with that. If you've already made those adjustments in Lightroom, don't worry about any of this. All you need to do is start right here where we're at right now. Now, first things first, you want to duplicate the background layer. Now, if you only have one layer here, what you're about to do isn't going to work. So what I always recommend is just create a new blank layer. This may be redundant if you already have layers like I do, but if you don't, you'll need to create this new layer with this plus box down here. Then hold Command, Option, Shift, and E. I know that is a lot. That's Command, Option, Shift, and E. It should be Control, Alt, Shift, and E if you're on a PC. Essentially, it's just going to make a visible copy of all of the layers below, which is exactly what we want to do. Now, you can call this whatever you want. I'm going to call it a star reduction because that is going to be what we are about to do. Might sound a little counterintuitive that we're editing our night photo and removing the stars, but trust me here, with your Milky Way, this is going to be what you want to do. Don't worry if you're not shooting a Milky Way pano. Any Milky Way image is going to be totally fine for this. I'm just using a pano as an example. So you're gonna go up to select, go to color range, and we're gonna change where it says select here, sampled colors, we're gonna change that to highlights. Now, what we're selecting here is the stars that are gonna be reduced. This is just like a layer mask, if you're familiar with layer masks, anything that's white on the screen right now is essentially going to be our selection, which ultimately is gonna be what we, um, we're gonna reduce the brightness of that particular area. In other words, reducing the brightness of the stars. So we wanna make a good selection of the stars, but we don't want like too much of the sky. You know, We wouldn't wanna have this much because we don't wanna darken all of this area. Generally, I find if you put your range in the middle and your fuzziness somewhere close to the middle, it'll be about where you wanna be. I want to avoid getting too far up on the fuzziness here and having like kind of gray in the background because I don't want to reduce the background of the sky. I just want to select stars. I'm okay if it selects the core of the Milky Way because we can always mask that out later. Right about here is about where I want to be. Um, this looks pretty good to me. If you can get your image somewhere similar, your values might be different depending on how bright your photo is, but uh, generally get your image looking something like this where it's selecting a lot of stars and not a lot of the rest of the sky. Go ahead and hit OK. Let that load out. Now you're going to go back to select. You're going to modify and you're going to expand by one pixel. Then go to select, modify feather by 
two pixels. Essentially what this does is it just increases the uh, selection, meaning that it's not gonna be such an abrupt change when we're darkening it, so it's gonna look a little bit more realistic. So I always expand by one and feather by two. Then you're gonna come in here, you're gonna go to filter, you're gonna go to other, and you're gonna go minimum. Adjust your settings. You want the radius to be 2.5 pixels and you want to preserve roundness. By default, it's gonna be on squareness, but pr I promise you, you want to be on roundness. So make sure you preserve roundness. Go ahead and hit okay and let that load out. Now this is our whole star reduction. The problem is we've got all of this selection still on the screen. You can hit Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC and that is going to remove the selection which is what we want. Now we can toggle this layer and you can see how we've darkened a lot of the stars. Problem is when you zoom in you'll notice this effect has been worked in a little bit too strong. Now to zoom in um, you can hit Command plus or Command minus to zoom out. And you wanna just zoom into the stars. You can hold the space bar and click and drag around the photo. We wanna avoid stuff like this. You can see how it just creates kind of little circles, which we don't want. We wanna adjust the opacity until we no longer see black circles around the stars, and we also no longer see stuff like this. Usually around 50% is gonna be where we wanna be. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna do about 65 just to apply it a little bit stronger so you can see it worked in a little bit more. So now as I zoom in, you can see we are looking pretty good. And if you don't like what it's doing to certain parts of the image, like if I didn't like what it was doing around the core of the Milky Way here, I could simply create a layer mask. I could grab my black brush, make sure it's on black. We're gonna go opacity, we'll go 20% and paint it in slowly. Hardness of zero. You can adjust the size as you see fit. Um, and you will go in and just paint this out. Essentially what we're doing is we're painting the effect, what we just did, out of certain spots on the image because we might not want to totally destroy our stars around the Milky Way. Something like that is looking a little bit better for me. You don't have to do this step here, uh, but it is something that I think a lot of times will help to make your image look a little bit better, so it is optional. Now, that is effect number one. Effect number two is going to really get you there as well. Let me show you what it is. So, essentially, it's gonna be a curves adjustment to the sky. My recommendation, click on a, um, a layer here that has the image on it. Make sure you're not selecting the mask. Select the image. Go ahead and go up and grab your quick selection tool. If you can't find it, press W on the keyboard. You can make your brush size, or I guess quick selection tool size a little bit bigger, just so it selects a little faster. And you're just gonna click and drag, and you'll notice how this will snap to the sky because we have good contrast between the sky and the foreground. Just like that, you can see it was super quick and easy. You can, of course, go back through and zoom in and make some refinements to little spots like this. You can hit the minus and then lower the size of your brush and just come in here and, oh, in this instance, you'll want to use the plus. And, you know, you can touch stuff up as much as you want. For sake of this video, I'm not going to talk too much about touching this up, but that is something that you can do if you want. I highly recommend it if you're spending time on an image. Um, it's definitely worth going in and touching up your selection. Now you're gonna go down to the adjustment layers here. You're gonna open up a curves. Now your curve is open here. Now when we add curves, because you can see that selection that we just made applied as a layer mask. So this is our layer mask. You can see now this layer mask is attached to this layer here, meaning that only things that are white on my layer mask will be receiving the, um, the curves that we're about to apply. Now, simply create an S curve here, and you can see just how sweet this thing is gonna get in a hurry. By adding contrast, we're adding a fair amount of color into the image. You can really pop this however you like. Some people out there have lower contrast Milky Ways. Some have higher contrast Milky Ways. I don't think there's necessarily a right or wrong way to do it. I think you should just do it however you like it. But I generally like to create a little curve like that. And then if I'm finding that some of these darks are getting too dark on the top, which I may want to bring this back in later, but I don't want to darken it so much right now, you can just drag this up and you can see we can kind of flatten those darks a little bit. 
a lot of times as I drag this up, I will drag the uh, bottom of the S curve down just to kind of bring a little bit more contrast in. And I will kind of just have a fine tuned balancing act. You can also play around here with your um, very top of the curve, see how that affects the image. But generally, I don't mess with the very top. I usually just mess with these three. Something around this range is looking pretty good. Let's toggle the before and the after. If you're feeling like it's too dark, just drag this up. Drag this up as well. Somewhere in there. Now, I personally think that this looks great already. There's just a few more tweaks, maybe like a little vignette that I would apply and maybe some spot healing or little things like that. Maybe some small color adjustments. But other than that, that's pretty much how I go about editing my Milky Way photos. You can see how this star reduction and the curves really, really bring this thing home in a hurry. Let's look at the before, just like this. You can see this is probably how many of your raw files look to the star reduction and the curves. So just a couple adjustments and it works in so quickly. We get a really nice looking Milky Way just like that. So those are the two adjustments that I like to use. Now I highly recommend saving this video so that you can apply it to any Milky Way photos that you edit in the future. I know a lot of this process is really step heavy and it's gonna be hard to remember exactly what to do in every single step. So being able to rewatch the video, remember each single step is going to help you out a ton. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you do wanna get better at photography. Thanks again and we'll see you guys next time.